Okay, Georgia, go. <laughs> <laughs> go. All right. Well, hi, Kristen. Um, and hi to everyone in Internet World on YouTube, Facebook, and now Twitch, too. Um, so welcome, everyone, to another exciting episode, we hope, of the Humans and Wildlife Show. I'm your co-host, George Terry, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Dr. Christian Sase. Christian, what are we going to talk about today? Yes, hi, George. I hope you're well. Today, it's really exciting because in 2018, I was delighted to have Dr. Jose Tavares, who is the director of the, um, of the Vulture uh, Cons Conservation Foundation. And he's very interesting, very interesting personality because um, he is actually uh, an ornithologist. He's, so he studied birds before. He's worked for the Portuguese government for quite some time, and he's very European in a sense because he's been in Turkey, he's obviously in Switzerland, and now he's in Spain. So I, I presume he speaks several languages, also been in the UK, very diverse, as diverse as the 23 species of, of vultures actually are, and that's what we're going to talk to him about. Yeah, it's very interesting. and I'm really excited about having Dr. Tavares on as a guest because, as you mentioned, he has the ornithology bird thing in common with you. Um, I study bats. I really have a soft spot for like misunderstood animals and vultures are certainly also in that category of misunderstood animals. So what do you, what do you say? Should we bring him on? Right on. Here he comes. Hello, Dr. Tavares. How are you? Can you hear us? Oh, he's frozen. Yeah, it looks I can like hear his you. video is frozen. Oh, okay. okay Great. Good. Yay. Welcome. Nope, I can Yes, this will uh, yeah, so this will hold because I'm in an hotel room in where I'm at, I'm at, where I'm attending a conference. So I hope that the internet here uh, will will hold for uh, for the for the session. Yeah, we and, hope so too. What's the conference on? It's on uh, uh, poisoning, which is actually the number one threat to vulture, as I will certainly. You cut out for a second, but I'm going to assume uh, you said lead poisoning. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so lead poisoning. In general. Oh, in general. Okay. Lead, but poisoning. Lead. Okay. So, yeah, why don't yeah. you, I guess, why don't you jump yeah. right in and tell us about, okay, poisoning, number one threat to vultures. I would not have guessed that, actually. So, um, I am, I'm going to ask people in the chat to maybe include what you think are some other threats to vultures. So poisoning, maybe let us know what types of poisoning or like what you've heard about um, like problems that vultures face when it comes to conservation and why we need people like uh, like Dr. Tavares to do all this work protecting them. Um, so yeah, what's how do, do people intentionally poison vultures? Well, they, they don't intentionally poison vultures uh, they would they, they usually use poison that kill predators usually carnivores that kill cattle or uh, game species and vultures are the unintended victims secondary victims of uh, of that poisoning incident but if uh, maybe the best would be for i have i don't know if you can share the screen uh, can uh, yes, can you see can. my presentation yes we can we can Yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, and let me just check. Uh, I will just put it on presentation mode. Can you now on presentation mode? Yes. Uh, not yet on presentation mode. But so, it's not on the presentation mode yet. I just see the single. Um, yeah, maybe if you're using multiple monitors, you might have yeah. to switch. We see a bunch of little pictures of the slides. Uh, so you are not on presentation mode yet. Um, yeah. Let me just check. And while uh, you're um, figuring that out, yeah. I'll just say hello very quickly to everyone who's yeah. joined us from the chats. Yeah. So David Dunn, Tony Cobb, mm -hmm. Frankman, Lucy, John, James, and Sean, and... Um, gentleman Ghost. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and Gentleman Ghost. Yeah, sorry, it does <laughs> roll up. So yeah, welcome everyone. It's great to see everyone, a lot of regular viewers and commenters as well as some people that i'm not as familiar with but i hope that you keep commenting and stick around yeah and david all right can you see it now on presentation mind, mode we 
No, we not see this. Yet, not yet in presentation mode. It's it's still yeah. in the, um, so we, we see all the pictures, but not in presentation. Which, okay, um, how do I do that? Uh, then, um, okay, uh, let me just try to find out. Da, 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 da. You see the pictures, but you don't see the. Da, 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 da. Hi, so Dolores. Thanks for the super sticker, David Dunn. Um, and and gentlemen, ghost will get to your question about scavenger behavior um, a little bit into the presentation. I've got it lodged in my brain. Um, David Dunn, if you don't mind, hop if you are able to at some point hop over to the Twitch stream. I want to experiment with adding you as like a moderator there, since I'm like learning how to use Twitch. Um, oh yeah, thanks for sharing the question. Yay! Right. Thanks. Thank you, David. Thank you. Very kind of you. <laughs> yeah. Or actually, maybe Kristen, you'd like to talk about this question a little bit while um, we're getting the presentation stuff figured out because you study eagles and you've seen a lot of raptor behavior. So the yeah, question yes, is- Yes, and, 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 and uh, it's interesting enough because whilst um, Jose is, is sorting out his presentation, which I'm sure he'll do shortly. Um, so in 2018, we addressed exactly that. And, and I, I remember Jose was, was, um, was indeed saying that, that the scavenger behavior is, is very similar to certain raptors, in fact, eagles or so on. And, and um, that it's not, Often, I'll, I'll just go a little bit into this, but but I'm I'm, I'm sure um, Jose has so many things to talk about, whilst whilst he's looking for this. Um, <laughs> vultures are commonly associated with smell. Really, that's what I thought. I grew up like that, right? Vultures have a good sense of smell, and that's how they do it. And then it happens to be, as far as I understand, only the turkey vulture that has good smell, and the others are just like eagles, the same scavengers. They rely on their eyes, so they're very similar in their behavior, right? Um, so that's uh, that. That's the comment on 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 the scavenger behavior, right? So we'll just we'll just be patient and we'll talk a bit more <laughs> about this whilst he's sorting things out. Yes, I uh, I can see the presentation mode in my computer. Uh, okay. Apparently not 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 yourselves, right? That, that's okay, um, Jose. What you can do if you want to. If there's a problem, just send it to me, and I will share it for you. Okay, that's it's not a problem. We can we can work around that. If you have an issue, just send me your presentation, and I'll I'll quickly upload it. Right? Yeah, and actually, I was with I was okay. actually at a wildlife. I can, I um, yeah, yeah. Just email it to Christian, and I'll fill in. I have stuff to fill in time with because I was actually at a wildlife rehabilitation center volunteering earlier today. Um, and I saw it, I was around a vulture and they have, yeah, I think there was just one vulture there that's actually kind of a long-term resident. But um, Mara is right. Mara Gross has this comment that um, I'll read part of it. Uh, Mara, you're correct. Vultures are appreciated for their wonderful cleanup abilities. However, it's a trait of projectile vomiting of the worst smelling content ever. Makes it difficult to want to be up close and personal with them. We'll listen to your presentation with hopes of learning some positive info to offset my personal repulsion. Yes, so, and it's not actually just vultures at the wildlife rehab place I was at earlier today. There was actually a baby American kestrel and it was projectile vomiting out of its cage <laughs> as well, all around. And I will tell you, compared to the vulture that was there, this little tiny kestrel baby was like a far worse culprit. Um, so it is, it is often, I know, a feature of baby birds um and i know vultures like vomit and stuff in the nest because they want their nest to smell bad to keep predators <laughs> away because they're just like this little defenseless baby and so they're like oh i'm just gonna make myself seem like too disgusting to eat um i actually didn't know i don't know whether the adults do it or not um but i noticed that like yeah this baby kestrel i was around earlier today was also projectile vomiting um and so maybe that's like to keep get its vomit out of the nest and like away from it I'm not I'm not exactly sure what the, what that is but yeah uh, certainly but the, certainly the vultures probably don't want you near them either I guess so we can certainly have like an appreciation for vultures and try to work towards their conservation without being near them in any associated uh, bodily 
fluids. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm looking at the comments. That's why I'm laughing. I know people have a lot of thoughts on this. Yeah. Uh, Jill Ferris, I've lived in California my entire 50 years and I've never seen birds as big as those of what I think tur turkey vultures are. Yeah, kind of scary looking. Yeah, definitely. They're big birds, but it's kind of nice to know that they're not, you know, birds that attack people per se. They're going after dead things mostly. Um, oh, and William says she's here to always watch her favorite eagle guy. That's you, Christian. No, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that would be like quite a feat if I managed to be someone's favorite eagle guy. Oh, that's very kind. That's the eagle behind me that's the favorite. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> very kind. Yeah, that's interesting. Actually, I have, I think I can share my screen briefly. Yes, you I can. took a picture of the vulture I was with earlier today. Actually, I have a video Actually, of it. Actually, I have, I think I can share my screen Oops. briefly. And for a second, I actually heard myself, which is concerning to me. I'm like, how did that happen? Um, okay, so I'm gonna share my my screen. Oh, am I allowed to? Yeah. Uh, why not? Oh yeah, I am. I am. Okay. So okay. you have to well, actually add it. Another, so Christian, next um, time um, you to you. Okay. Okay. Which which email is it? Is that a photo or which one is it? Uh, because I got two. I'm just gonna look out. See which email it is. Um... Christian, is my screen shared now or no? It is. Okay, I'll play this video then. Uh -huh. Oh wow! Show it Look at that. Yeah, so if you couldn't hear, I was telling the vulture that I was going to be doing a show on it later today, and it was not like that impressed, but that's okay. Um, and then, oh, I didn't download the video, I guess. Let's I'll stop sharing my screen real quick. I didn't have, I had a really good picture. Yay. And thanks everyone for your patience. Sorry about this, but sometimes we really have to improvise, right? It's, uh, yeah. Jose, which email did you send it to? So I'm just looking at both. Um, not sure if his connection is bad, you know. Yeah, there's some connection. That's the that's the price you pay when you have Sorry. scientists coming in from conferences. Uh, it's still transferred. Because otherwise, what we'll do is I'll put him on audio and WhatsApp, and mm -hmm. we can we can share the presentation. Uh, um, because the, the 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 audio channel is better than this channel, mm -hmm. and then we'll we'll do it that way. We'll find a way. Uh, yeah. So, I, I've transferred the uh, the file to. Okay, hang on. Okay, I'll check. I'll check. And it's still transferring. Because, it's slow. It's, it's still transferring because it's a very, it's a very large file with lots of pictures. So it's okay. Dead, okay. Um, not yet completely done. Okay. Jose, yeah, that's totally fine. I have. I'm gonna. I can share my screen again, and I actually have um, the website up. Jose's website. If you want to add my screen back in, Christian. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Next, uh, next time you'll be able to do it yourself. I'm sure we can figure this out. Someday. Yeah, so this is um, the website for the foundation that Jose, sorry, is the director of, founded. I don't quite remember. Um, oh, director, it's right here. So yeah, the Vulture, Vulture Conservation Fund has all kind of information on it. Um, you, they have information on like protecting them, the different types of environmental threats. They even have threats on different types of vultures. So the foundation is based in um, Switzerland, I believe. And so there's a lot of European species of vultures here that you can learn about, included the bearded, including the bearded vulture, um, the scenarius vulture, Egyptian vulture, and the grift, griffin vulture. And um, also, you know, they do all kinds of work at this foundation from helping to monitor and learn about these animals they do captive breeding of vultures to try to build up their populations 
um, and then that, of individuals that they, they can then reintroduce into the wild. Um, they have different projects that and you can see um, completed projects that they have as well as ones that they're still working on. So, you know, things like combating illegal killing of birds um, and, and one working with energy infrastructure here. I actually don't know quite what that is, but yeah, it's a pretty cool. And the first thing that caught my eye when I came here was honestly like just learning about the different types of vultures because I love animals. Um, and yeah, the griffin vulture I thought was cool, Europe's most social vulture. Um, and so they have, I guess, you know, they they hang out with each other, which is pretty cool. I think that's a way that I sort of link to animals as humans are social creatures and vultures are social creatures as well. Um, so these griffin vultures can live up to 37 years in captivity. So some of them are older than I am, which is nuts um, in my in my mind. Okay, I'm just about to open the presentation. Give me a moment. Yep, I'll stop I'm sharing. Al I'm, I'm almost, almost there. Okay, almost there. Give me, just give me a second here. And I'm going to go ahead and post the link to this website in the chat to the vulture um, Jose's vulture conservation site. Um, some people asked about where all. There was a question earlier from the audience about where all we're streaming. So we're on Facebook. There is a Humans and Wildlife Show Facebook page. Um, okay. Go ahead. And then we're also on um, YouTube and Facebook as Zase Photo Christians. Okay, uh, we're well, already Jose. That's yeah. the first. That's the first picture. Go. <laughs> cool. That's that's the first picture. So I I should. Uh, I will let you know when uh, when I yeah. uh, when I would like the slides to pass on. That's like, is, is that's okay. Okay, good. Well, well, first of all, thank you, thank you, Christian, and uh, um, uh, thank you uh, all for for, for 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 the invitation to, uh, to to come here, and thank you all for for being here and for following this uh, this session on vultures. So, um, my name is Rosetta Vaz, and you can pass for the next slide, please. Um, by the way, this is the eye of a birded vulture, one of the vulture species in Europe that I will talk uh, um, about in the next uh, in, in the next half an hour. Or so, so my name is Rosetta Vaz, and the director director of the Vulture Conservation Foundation, um, Europe's leading uh, organization working on the conservation of vultures. Um, and we do work mostly in Europe, even though we've got also some activities in uh, uh, Africa and in Asia. And we work with uh, old world vultures, uh, which are a little bit different from the new world vultures, the vultures that uh, you have there in, uh, in, in the Americas. Next slide, please. I think uh, I think that you know if and and you know and this is this is specifically for obviously uh, new uh, old world old world vultures. Uh, if I asked forty years ago, um, you know where uh, where sh if you asked me forty years ago or if you if you had asked the vulture expert forty years ago, where uh, shall I go to see large concentrations of vultures? I would definitely say go to India. Because India, 40 years ago, was indeed the continent of vultures. You go to an Indian town, and this is a picture taken about 40 years ago in an Indian in an Indian town. Uh, you can see the buildings there. This is a you know a rubbish uh, a rubbish stamp uh, in in in, uh, in an Indian town, and and every every single Indian town would be full of of, of vultures. You, you cannot see this any longer because Indian vultures, vultures in the Indian subcontinent, and not only in India, the country, but India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Nepal, for it, have, have, have crashed, have declined, uh, have disappeared, and 99% uh, of, 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 of their numbers have, have simply vanished. So today is actually extremely rare to see um, uh, vultures in, uh, in, in Southern Asia, in the Indian subcontinent. Next slide, please. So maybe 20 years ago, if, if you had asked that question, where, where, where can I go to see lots of vultures? I would say, well, you know, you can go to Africa. Uh, Africa is the continent of vultures, the, 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 the usual typical scene of, of the African savanna, uh, uh, some, some sort of, uh, you know, a lion kill or a leopard kill or a, a hyena kill, and then vultures coming in and, 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 and starting to, to also feast on the, uh, on the um, uh, rests of the... Of the carcass of the of, of of the killed of the killed animal, this scene now in Africa is again extremely rare. 
because these days we are actually going through uh, a huge vulture crisis in Africa. Vultures, vultures are declining very fast in, in, in Africa. Um, and there are uh, now vast parts of the African continent where vultures uh, are nowhere to be seen. Next slide, please. Next, yeah. Uh, and yeah, and this is this is uh, indeed uh, uh, the the main reason why vultures are are being killed in in Africa. A widespread campaign, some of it associated with poaching uh, vultures uh, because they concentrate on, uh, on 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 the carcasses of of killed animals. They also tend to concentrate or 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 uh, get attracted to the carcasses of poached elephants and rhino uh, after they are killed for. Um, for their tasks, for uh, um, uh, and um, and and therefore, they they may signal poaching incidents, and poachers know this. So what they've been doing is they've been actually uh, uh, poisoning them in, in their in their hundreds and in their thousands, so that they do not signal to enforcement agencies poaching uh, poaching incidents, and uh, this has really caused a, a huge crash in vulture populations in um, uh, in Africa next slide please to the to the point that um, uh, of um, you know the um, uh, 11 uh, species of vulture that occur in in Africa seven of them are on the edge of of, uh, of extinction and and are classified as critically endangered um or, or endangered by the international union for the conservation of vultures so so vultures in africa are also undergoing a very fast decline and and they've disappeared from large parts of the african continent next slide please in fact uh, your today your best chance to see large numbers of vultures in the old world and i'm talking here about africa asia and europe is actually europe uh, and nobody really thinks about, about about Europe as a continent of vultures, but the fact is that uh, this is the only uh, continent in the old world where vultures uh, have actually increased, where vulture populations are very healthy, and where in 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 many sites you can see scenes like this. This is a photograph taken in Spain, um, and there are many places in Spain, in Portugal, in France, where you can routinely see 500 or even up to a thousand vultures. Of, of several species uh, feeding on the carcasses of uh, livestock breeders. Next slide, please. Yeah, Jose, can I oh, just, oh, just intervene very quickly because this is very interesting. Because in the beginning, of course, you were talking about the old world vultures and the new world vultures. And I remember from <laughs> from your, your talk that time, you actually said how evolution has put them together, although they come from very different backgrounds. Can you talk a little bit, especially about the yes. culture and how that differs and what, where they come from and so on? Well, yes. In fact, there are there are two different families uh, uh, with, with two different evolutionary origins, but that then evolved to explore the same ecological niche, which is this scavenging niche. That so so basically feeding on 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 dead uh, on, on on dead meat. Uh, so they are uh, they are really distinct. And and one way that that, that really uh, makes them different is that old world vultures uh, detect uh, food by sight not by smell mm -hmm. so these griffon vultures that you see in the picture uh, they actually detect the dead animals by sight and by queuing in on other scavenging species uh, smaller scavenging species like the crows or the ravens that often find the carcasses first while the new world vultures they they detect uh, food the you know dead meat uh, the carcass animal carcasses by smell so they okay. they do so your turkey vultures yes. and your condors can smell yes. rotten meat and therefore they are they are attracted by by rotten meat by smell our vultures in europe in africa and asia they don't have a, a developed sense of smell and they detect their food by uh, by sight so this is there um, is a human this is the the four species of of, of European vultures. Uh, so we've got only f out of the twenty three species of, of vultures worldwide, we've got only four in in, in Europe. 
Um, uh, and from from left to right there, you have uh, the Griffin Vulture, and I will speak a little bit about, about all of them in, in a minute. Then you've got the, the uh, European Black Vulture or Cinerius Vulture. In the middle there, you've got the Birded Vulture, which is a, you know, a, a bird, a, a vulture of, of high mountains specialized on, on eating bones. And then you've got uh, the, the smaller the smaller one, um, the, the white one with the, with a yellow beak in the front, which is called the, the Egyptian vulture, which is also the only European vulture, which is actually um, migratory and, mi and migrates to Africa to spend the winter there, while the other three are pretty much sedentary and they stay in Europe all year round. Next slide, please. Um, and, and, and I think you, you've skipped one, but... Uh, oh, but did I? Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, and, and I mean, the vultures occur vultures occur in Europe, uh, 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 mostly around the Mediterranean, uh, in, uh, in in the mountainous uh, part of, of, of Europe. They avoid uh, flatlands, the, the, the northern flatlands, uh, and this is because they are uh, soaring birds, um, and they need, uh, so they, they are not very good flyers, and they need the... Um, the, the hot air currents uh, uh, to move uh, and to, 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 to fly great distances uh, across the skies to look for food and, and forage for, for food. And these, these hot air currents, these thermals, uh, only form um, uh, uh, in, in mountainous grounds uh, or in, in, in mountainous areas. And most of the mountains in Europe are, uh, are, are concentrated around the Mediterranean, from, from, from Spain and Portugal to southern France, the Alps, of course, down the Italian peninsula, and then through the Balkans to, um, to Turkey. The general situation in Europe is that uh, vulture populations, particularly in Western Europe, in Portugal, Spain, and France, uh, have increased uh, uh, substantially um, in the last 30 to 40 years uh, and th their populations have, have in, in some cases increased by 300 or 400 percent in, in the last in the last uh, 30 to 40 years in the Balkans that um, in Eastern Europe in southeastern Europe that recovery is is, is, is now uh, is only now starting um, uh, 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 and the Egyptian vulture is really the, uh, the the only species which is still declining in Europe. The Egyptian vulture, remember, is the the only migratory uh, vulture uh, that spends the winter in Africa, and it's the only uh, the, the only species that uh, is still going down. Next slide, please. Yeah, I have a quick question. Sorry, yeah. oh, sorry. Oh, you want to go first, George or Shai? <laughs> oh, maybe we have the same question. I was just going to say, why is it the only species that's still declining in Europe? Is it linked to the stresses of having of migratory? Like the challenges partly, like partly because partly indeed partly because of, of of the migration which really adds um you know some stress to uh, to to its life uh, its life cycle but partly also because uh, it's prone to um some some threats notably poisoning and electrocution which i will speak in in a minute uh which is affecting less the other species of vultures uh, now but yes i think i think the the fact that it is migratory adds to to, to the pressures and and, and is still make you know makes it still uh, declining. Um, yeah. Next slide, please. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, and I have to go throw in a quick question because I was thinking of eagles. Actually, Jose, if you go more north, you you do have a lot of eagles because you also have a lot of mountainous areas, also going to Scotland, Norway, and other areas. So, um, is that due to the climate that because obviously there are also scavengers there from from raptors. But you don't find vultures there. Yes, it's partly it's partly due to climate uh, because uh, even though you've got a few mountains there, indeed in, in Norway and, and in Scotland, um, the you know the the, the the climate it's too far north and cold, and the thermals don't develop very very much. But it's also partly due to to um, uh, to the abundance of food. Uh, it, it's around the Mediterranean that you have either the the wild ungulates. Or uh, uh, the um, domestic livestock, the extensive, uh, you know, uh, rearing of, of, of domestic livestock that uh, that uh, also provides uh, the food for vultures. So I, I think the, the, the first message that I would like to leave here is that Europe has really become 
a, a land of vultures. Um, it's a continent where vulture conservation best practice uh, has developed and is being implemented, um, uh, where there's lots of positive conservation stories uh, about vulture, cons you know, vulture conservation. We've been increasing their populations, we've been restoring them, we've, re we've been reintroducing them. Um, uh, and uh, Globally speaking, vultures in Europe is a positive is a positive story. Contrary to vultures in Africa or in Asia, right. where indeed the declines are still continuing. Next slide, please. And and this is very important because these days uh, in the conservation world and in biodiversity in general, uh, the the most of of the news are not very positive. And there is a bit of a doom and gloom culture in the conservation world. You know, species are disappearing. Uh, uh, there's no hope, uh, extinction crisis, biodiversity crisis, and it's extremely important to have uh, positive conservation stories um, so that, uh, you know, people have hope and people uh, can believe uh, that uh, this, uh, generally speaking, negative situation about biodiversity can be reverted uh, and we indeed can, can win the battle of, of, of biodiversity uh, conservation. Next slide, please. Vultures, of course, often do not have a, a good press. They are associated with bad omens, with death, because they are scavengers. They eat dead meat. They very often are um, not very well considered in human literature, human, uh, you know, human texts, and uh, and human human society. These these are pictures of griffin vultures, and the red on their face is actually comes from the carcass they uh, they they are eating. Is you know is 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 a bit of blood from the carcass they are eating. Next slide, please. Is that snow there? That's snow. Yes, that's snow. Also, oh, they France. do cope in the cold. That's interesting. Right. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, so you know th this is a typical picture of of, of of vultures feeding on a dead carcass. You can see the intestines of a, of, of a carcass there, and, and and vultures feasting on that. And you know, and, and I would say that many people would say that this picture is probably not very nice. And you know, these are kind of gross animals uh, eating uh, very dirty and, and and eating eating you know dead dead animals. Next slide, please. <laughs> Uh, and in, indeed, they are depicted not in a very good light, uh, you know, in, in, in many places and, and uh, across popular or, or, or less popular literature. We all know the vultures that wait for, you know, for the death of, of, of Lucky Luke. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, next slide, please. Um, yeah. Vultures depicted as as ugly creatures uh, in uh, in in many in many cartoons and and, and, and series, you, you know vultures are ugly. Um, next slide, please. Or even <laughs> or, or even study like uh, or even stupid like like these these vultures these vultures in 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 the jungle That's you know the jungle book, book, book. Uh, the, the famous uh, jungle book. Next slide, please. Uh, and indeed. You know, the vulture world is associated with, with with some negative connotations. People talk about vulture capitalism. You know, in, in with a negative connotation. You know, the vulture bankers, the people that are robbing us. Next slide, please. But I I, I would argue that that vultures are actually very important. And, and why are vultures important? Uh, next slide, please. Because vultures are really the, you know. Uh, our the, our our planet's cleaning uh, cleaning crew, um, and and we don't often uh, we don't often uh, appreciate the, the 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 garbage man, either the real human garbage man that cleans our streets, or the the nature's garbage animals or garbage collectors, which which are which are vultures, until for example there is a strike. Uh, uh, and, and and the garbage the garbage collectors do not work for a few days, and then we, use, we start seeing images like this: the garbage accumulating in our in our streets and our cities, and then we start we start really uh, you know uh, realizing how important the garbage collectors are for uh, our you know our cities and our quality of living uh, and the same thing should sh you know happens in nature i mean if vultures disappear uh, we then see um, carcasses accumulating in our fields uh, and that's not good for a number of reasons next slide please 
So uh, and that that indeed has, has happened in India before, uh, as I said, Indian towns were full fully awash with with vultures eating uh, all sorts of carcasses and and and, and garbage. Next slide, please. And when um, when vultures disappear there, and they disappear there because of a veterinary uh, medicine called the clofenac that that was given uh, in large quantities to uh, to cows in India, um, and that happened to be lethal to vultures. But when the vultures disappeared, uh, you you suddenly started to see carcasses piling up in the in the fields and in the countryside of India. Next slide, please. So when you say, clear, oh, sorry, here we go again. We have questions at the same time. Uh, to be clear, the medicine was not intended to poison the vultures. This was for like sickness or something that the cows it's, had. It's a veterinary medicine, very commonly used. We use it as well. Uh, Voltaren, it's an anti-inflammatory drug. Oh, yeah. the, the, human, the, human, the human formulation is called Voltaren. Uh, the, 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 you know, the, the livestock formulation is called the clofenac. Uh, it's very common. It's basically given for uh, any ailment, uh, some sort of inflammation of, of, of any sort that, that uh, cattle have. Um, and it, it turns out to be extremely toxic to vultures, which is a bit of a strange thing because vultures can actually eat. They are resistant to every, all microbes and, and microorganisms. They eat dead meat, they eat rotten meat, uh, and they can, they can basically, re, you know, things that would kill us immediately but you know they, they would not kill a vulture and yet um, a few drops of this veterinary uh, medicine um, uh, can can kill a vulture and can can cause uh, um, uh, you know renal uh, uh, kidney fi uh, failure in, in in vultures so so because of, of, of the disappearance of, of vultures in, in in the Indian subcontinent uh, images like this are not very very frequent and next slide please um, and, uh, and 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 therefore you you know you you basically lose the scavenging uh, uh, and the, the cleaning um, the cleaning uh, um, uh, services provided by the vulture. This is this is an image uh, or a series of images that. Uh, uh, taken taken in Europe, and between the first image on the left hand corner and and the, and the, the last image uh, in the, the top bottom right right hand corner, uh, there's only a few hours. So basically, you can see the the efficiency and the effectiveness of vultures as scavenging birds. Uh, usually, the the the, 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 the the carcasses are detected, as I said, by uh, other small scavenging birds like the magpies or the crows or the ravens. Sometimes also uh, kites arrive first. But once the vultures arrive, they they feast on the carcass, and in a few um, you know in, in a few uh, hours time, uh, they basically clean the carcass uh, you know completely, and 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 only bones are are left. Next slide, please. And indeed, this is this is this is usually what what uh, what uh, remains of carcasses after after a few hours and after a group of vultures feeding on, on on the carcass. Next slide, please. So if um, if vultures are not there, other scavenging animals, uh, you know, benefit from the abundance of carcasses. And other scavenging animals include, in, and this is a picture, and this is a real case from India, feral dogs, uh, feral dogs that start to 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 increase. Because uh, they, you know, they they suddenly have got plenty of food available, food that would be consumed by vultures. But if the vultures are not there, uh, and and in fact the uh, the rabies after the vultures disappeared from from, from southern India, rabies rabies exploded, um, and and has had a, a, a very large and significant impact in terms of human health and and public uh, uh, public health services in, in in southern India. Next slide, please. So, so, so vultures are extremely important because indeed they are, uh, they are the, the, the scavenging, uh, you know, the, 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 the cleaning crew, nature's cleanup crew, uh, and, and, and this function is extremely important for, for, our, for our ecosystems. I would argue that vultures are smart too. These are Egyptian vultures, and this is one of the few bird species that are known to use tools. In this case, is in Africa. Well, I said that they 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 migrate and they winter in Africa, and in Africa they sometimes uh, actually eat ostrich eggs. Um, and what they do is they use these stones. Uh, ostrich eggs are quite large eggs with with a thick shell, and sometimes they cannot actually perforate the egg with their beak. And what they do is they use. Uh, stone uh, as you can see in the picture uh, to actually break the eggshell and then eat the ostrich egg so they you know they can be quite intelligent too next slide please 
um, you know, this is, and, and, and there's, there's a number of, of, of history, and, you know, and this is from ancient Greece, uh, and this is a birded vulture, um, uh, which sometimes actually picks up live tortoises. Uh, and then uh, um, this species, as we'll see, uh, mostly eats bones. Um, but in, in some cases, it actually picks up live tortoises. Uh, but then in order to, to tweet the, 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 the tortoise, it actually drops the, the tortoise over some rocks in order to, to break the shell of the tortoise. And there is this uh, ancient, uh, ancient uh, uh, Greece history, Aeschylus, uh, the, 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 the famous philosopher, was actually killed because a birded vulture dropped a tortoise uh, over over his head. Next slide, please. Wait, is that a true story or like a myth? Well, it's it's uh, it's a story from from ancient Greece, so probably probably a myth. Even yeah. though uh, there might be some sort of uh, you know um, real uh, background, it's it's perfectly um, possible that. This might have happened uh, once somewhere, uh, you know, in uh, a few thousand years ago. And I, I would also argue that that vultures are, are, are quite pretty too. This is a, a pair of of, of scenarios vultures tending to their small baby in, uh, in in the nest. Next slide, please. I would like now to 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 go through the the, the main threats affecting affecting vultures. So what 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 kills vultures in in, in general? Next slide. And and the number one threat killing vultures, please, you can go ahead. The number one uh, the number one threat killing vultures is, is really poison. So poison is killing vultures worldwide and in Europe. This is not only in in Europe. This is also the case for uh, for, for for vultures in in the New World, in in, in both North North America and, and South America. Next slide, please. When you talk about poison, you also mean lead poison, or or, or... also mean lead poisoning, but mostly poison baits. Okay. Uh, yeah. In the case of in the case of the Californian condor, uh, <laughs> lead poisoning is indeed. Uh, uh, you know, a, a, a main threat, but in vultures in general, uh, poison baits uh, are a, a much bigger threat right. than than lead, lead poisoning. This is this is uh, what I mean. This is uh, uh, basically pieces of meat laced with a very potent chemical. In this case, uh, these blue dots are, are are the chemical carbofuran, and they are put on 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 this on on these pieces of meat um, uh, to to basically kill uh, kill wildlife. Next slide, please. And 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 the, usually the the these poison baits are directed to to carnivores, wolves, coyotes, uh, leopards and lions in Africa, hyenas, uh, foxes, lynx. This you know it's a human wildlife conflict. These predators, these carnivore predators, uh, often kill livestock. Uh, and obviously, livestock breeders do not like that, and therefore um, uh, they they uh, uh, they resort to uh, um, a cheap, easy, but extremely harmful and illegal um, uh, way of resolve of resolving human wildlife conflict, which is basically to poison or to try to poison these these predators. Next slide, please. The problem is that uh, very often it's vultures who find these poison baits first, and you know this uh, this slide uh, shows a little bit how, how this poison uh, does you know uh, acts and, and kills vultures. So vultures either find the the poison baits or find the the carnivores that ate the poison baits um, and that died, but they themselves are then eaten because they are carcasses eaten by vultures. And they are, they are, of course, uh, full of poison, uh, and vultures uh, uh, come down and and and, and eat them, and, and and they themselves become uh, become poison. So they they are not the intended uh, targets of these poison baits, but they uh, often are uh, the most frequent victims. Secondary, uh, the, the you know the, the of uh, unintended unintended victims of these poison baits. Next slide, please. And, and this is happening uh, traditionally all over Europe. This is a birded vulture from one of our reintroduction projects that uh, has been found a few years ago, killed in, in, in a Spanish a Spanish mountain. And this is still happening uh, in Europe. It's now getting much better in Europe, and that's why European vultures are increasing. But it's still happening uh, you know, in Africa in large numbers. Um, and, and, and in some places in Europe, this is still happening. So it's, that it's, vulture yeah. is huge. Yeah, Sorry. It's very large. <laughs> What it is very species large. is that? It's a birded vulture, wingspan of about three meters. Three. 
bearded vulture. Yeah, it made sense. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And and a quick question: Is there some? Uh, so why is the why it's so successful in Europe? Is there also punishment for that? Is you can you be uh, convicted? Yeah. For you can there's ways of investigating and 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 uh, you know uh, the, the, the this environmental crime and uh, uh and and then eventually bringing the the culprits to justice uh okay. finding them you know in some cases you know prison sentences mm -hmm. and and therefore this uh, this uh, this practice is becoming less and less uh, frequent in, in europe next slide please yeah, uh, as I said, this is happening at, at, at a large scale in Africa. This is this is a, a common a common scene from Africa where these poisoning incidents sometimes uh, affect dozens or or even hundreds of, of, of vultures. Next slide, please. Uh, and, and this is is is, is you know uh, giving a, or, or or causing a, a devastating blow to, to to many African African species. Next slide, please. Jose, just putting something a positive spin, especially in South Africa. What I know from David Hancock, I've not seen this before. He's an eagle biologist. Is there seems to be a vulture cafe in South Africa? I don't. You may have heard of that, where people can yeah. go and and so on. So. That's vulture re vulture restaurants where where where, yeah. where food is provided for for, for vultures yes yes and people uh, and that's can indeed, yeah 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 and that's indeed a, a solution for for these mass mass poisonings yeah N next slide please yeah so uh, this is really a, a serious issue uh, this is just some 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 figures um, uh, from from Spain where over a period of uh, about twenty five years. Uh, we've recorded uh, over 6,300 deaths of, 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 of vultures. Um, uh, and this is only the tip of the iceberg. Uh, this is the, um, you know, the, 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 the vultures that were found. Many, many poisoned vultures are, are not found. So you can, you can really imagine the number of, of um, uh, animals that have traditionally been, been killed. And as, as I mentioned, the drivers is carnivore, um, Carnivore, um, uh, co you know, conflict with carnivores attempts to, to 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 kill the carnivores either because of hunting or or, or livestock uh, livestock uh, livestock issues. Can, can you Next. just answer that question? Are there vultures in Australia? No, there aren't. Interesting. No. Interesting. There aren't vultures in, in in Australia. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Um, so I mean, uh, one of the problems why why this this issue has you know has not been solved until recently it is now being solved but uh, had not been solved until recently is that um, the enforcement agencies and particularly the police were not really taking it very seriously it is a crime it is an environmental crime uh, but but the, the police force was not trained uh, or uh, uh, did not have the awareness uh, about the need to solve to solve this uh, and therefore while for example homicides or rapes uh, or, or you know burglaries uh, are are taken taken seriously and, and 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 are on the most part solved in the sense that you know uh, suspects are found uh, culprits are uh, are sentenced um in the case of wildlife poisoning until recently uh, uh, only a very 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 small percentage of cases uh, actually uh, had um, uh, any uh, positive or or definitive con uh, conclusion in terms of of uh, you know a crime investigation and and, and penalty but, Next slide, that, but in, in all fairness uh there jose isn't that also because this is much more difficult because a lot of these crimes that you're referring to are typically in cities where you have a larger top, a population of of police and, and and so on and law enforcement while whilst you're out there it's much more difficult yes indeed it is it is partly that it's partly because they are difficult crimes to solve uh, but so so is terrorism i mean you know the, the terrorists yes. terrorists use uh, uh, tools and techniques that that make them uh, very difficult to detect and yet the police forces and, and our intelligence agencies have developed techniques um, to uh, to track uh, terrorism and indeed there are special uh, wildlife crime forensic techniques mm -hmm. that enable the police forces uh, oh, if they if, if to, to 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 really uh, uh, be able to, to to identify suspects if if they if they do so wish and in fact uh, the truth is that in Spain they've started to do that and, and we see the results next slide please 
Um, and, and indeed, this is what uh, what I'm talking about. So, so you know, in Spain, for example, there's been really a push to to, to deal with, with with this threat in in a comprehensive way. Uh, a lot of of, of uh, action plans and regional plans were developed. Uh, dogs, because uh, you know, dogs as we've got dogs to, to to smell drugs or to smell arms or to smell missing people there are also dogs that can be trained to smell poison baits and to small to, to smell poisoned animals and that can detect poison animals in, in in nature so dogs were trained and brought into the police force to deal with this type of um, uh, of, of environmental crime and and, and threats and uh, toxicology analysis and protocols were were were, were, were developed and, and next slide please and and and, and the fact is that uh, as part of that the incidence of poisoning as you can see in this graph in you know in the in the bars to the right the incident of the incidence of poisoning has a actually been decreasing uh, in the last few years in Spain. So this is becoming less of a problem in Spain simply because the enforcement agencies took it seriously and are doing their job. Next slide, please. But there are nine, there are nine years of statistics missing here, right? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, this is, this is a graph uh, that yeah. shows the, the, the data only to 2013. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I was just 13, curious. But, but the, the, the evolution is, is actually in that sense. It has okay. further decreased between 2013 and, 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 okay. and the dates. Okay. Right, yeah. Next slide, please. Oh, okay. Oh, no, next slide, yeah, you can, yeah. So uh, yeah, and and we we very often use uh, the, the Spanish example um, as as best practice because again, as this as this graph shows, uh, the incidence of poisoning cases uh, have been decreasing in Spain uh, in the last uh, in the last uh, ten to to fifteen years. Next slide, please. Yeah. So, and and we are using indeed. The, the Spanish example uh, elsewhere in Europe, and for example, we are now have got a very large project in the Balkans, uh, involving a number of, 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 of Balkan countries: Albania, Bosnia, Croatia, Greece, North Macedonia, Serbia, and we are basically replicating and using the Spanish best practice in these countries so that they get up to speed and develop. Uh, you know the same anti-poisoning programs that now exist in, in in Spain and follow the protocols that now exist in Spain in order to to, to deal with this uh, with these threats. Next slide, please. Um, and this includes, of course, quite a lot of studies and uh, and, and situation mapping. We did we did a, a, a rather comprehensive study about the incidence of of, of poison in, in in the Balkans. Next slide, please. And and we developed this. Um, this uh, uh, program of training called the Wildlife Crime Academy, where actually police officers from uh, these countries uh, are trained by Spanish uh, uh, police officers that uh, have developed those uh, forensic, um, you know, and, and, and wildlife crime investigation techniques. Uh, they are trained and, and uh, receive uh, uh, those uh, those. Uh, techniques and, and, and teachings in order to implement in their own uh, in their own countries Next slide, please. yeah and these are some, some of the figures of these training courses that we uh, have now been doing in the balkans and are now expanding to other areas of the mediterranean including uh, north africa next slide so this includes uh, as i mentioned these anti-poison dog units dogs that can smell poison, can smell poison animals and that are effectively used in nature oh. in order to detect these, uh, these, uh, uh, these threats. Next, next slide. Well, this is another threat, uh, which is now becoming quite rare in Europe, but once upon a time was very, was, was very uh, common, which is actually the illegal um, shooting of, of, of raptors. This affected, this was very common in, you know, 50 years ago and uh, uh, 60 years ago across Europe. Uh, basically, hand, hunters and, and, and people used to shoot everything, uh, including protected species. Um, same thing in, in, in Northern, North America. Um, and, and, and so 50 or 60 years ago, quite a lot of vultures disappeared from, from large areas because of, uh, of, of shooting. Next slide, please. And, well, and to be clear, that picture, though, is not accurate in the sense that it shows this vulture like kind of like attacking a poor yes, yes, close yeah. person it, right They're like a, oh my God. <laughs> yeah it's a it's a uh just a you know a representation in in actually historic book this is still happening today unfortunately and this is again a picture of a birded vulture that was shot uh, and killed in france uh, very recently 
uh, two years ago. This is one of the birds that we have been reintroducing in France, and which again oh. was unfortunately shot. And you can see there the X-ray with all the pellets, the the, the you know the the lead pellets from from the ammunition uh, that from from the hunter that that shot the. The, the 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 birds and this unfortunately is still happening even though in Europe is now becoming quite quite rare fortunately it's only a minority of hunters that still shoot at uh, protected species next slide please the 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 next threat which is quite quite important in Europe and, and elsewhere including uh, including North America and South America is the electrocution uh, and the electrocution happens in medium tension electricity pylons. Uh, when vultures and large eagles, and this also affects quite a lot of large eagles, perch on uh, uh, the electricity pylons um, and uh, uh, accidentally touch the wire at the same time as they are perched. Uh, and this makes communication between the, 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 the wire, the electricity and the earth and basically elect, you know, causes electrocution and electric shock that runs through the, the, the bird and, um, and, 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 and uh, causes the death by electrocution of, of, of the bird. They, be, they basically burn down simply because there, there's, a very, you know, there, there's a very high voltage uh, uh, discharge through, through the body. In fact, this is one quite important cause of, of forest fires in many places in Europe is because, you know, there's an electrocution in, in a medium tension pole, the, the, the vulture uh, gets, you know, gets burned, uh, very often uh, falls to the ground. And if the, the ground is very, is very dry, uh, it, it can actually cause um, a forest, a forest fire. Next slide, please. Yeah, and it's sad because I mean, I'm an electrical engineer, it's, it's very easy to, to protect that they can put a sleeve on. Uh, you know, exactly. They sit and thereby they extend they they you know they extend the range because they usually sit there and that's the danger exactly how they're sitting there right exactly so it, yeah. it can be solved yes it can be solved yeah. exactly yeah. so that's that's exactly what what yeah. what I mean so you yeah. can you can you can see there uh, why you know why they uh, they, they get electrocuted because they yeah. detach the the, the 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 wires at the same time as as uh, as, as they are perched obviously the bigger the bird is yeah. the, the the bigger the probability of that happening mm. uh, but uh, but then you know there are poles which are safe uh, because basically the lines are yeah. under uh, yeah. the, the, the perching uh, platform and poles that are not really safe because basically yeah. the wires run on the top uh, and, 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 and the birds tend to perch in between the wires and therefore they tend to touch the wires and get uh, and get electrocuted. The, next slide please. Um, there is a very simple uh, there's a very simple system as you said uh, and you can see it there. Uh, you can either put systems on top of the pole that prevent the birds from perching um, or you can actually I, I insulate isolate yeah. uh, you know a meter each each side of the of the pile and of, of the cable with those plastic uh, materials um, and like this if the bird perches the the, the plastic it doesn't really get uh, connection with, with with electricity and 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 this is really simple and indeed uh, quite a lot of electricity utilities are working with us yeah. um, in order to to insulate this uh, these uh, medium tension electricity uh, cables next slide please collision is different and collision does happen in the high tension lines the high tension lines are the very large lines uh, where where there's, there's a very large distance between the, yeah. the wires so, so there there's not an issue of, of electrocution but sometimes when the weather is very bad when there's fog or rain and birds are flying they can actually collide against the line uh, and break the neck or break the wing. So this this is also a threat to to vultures and, and eagles. Yeah, next slide, please. So you can see here a, a, a birded vulture flying uh, across a line, and you know uh, it usually sees it. But uh, there are instances if, if the weather is, is poor or the visibility is poor, where it can in, indeed collide against the cables. Next next slide, please. Uh, and, 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 and of course, these collisions also happen against wind farms uh, and wind farms can be a problem, uh, particularly in, in, in some ridges which are migratory paths of, of, of birds of prey and vultures and, and birds can collide and, and die and get completely uh, you know, smashed or cut by, by the, the, ro the rotating blades of, of, of wind farms. Next slide, please. So, so what is that being done there? This is always a topic that interests me very much. So, because they obviously this is being addressed, right? I mean, they, they, 
Uh, yes, even though even though it's quite difficult because of course uh, you know we, we need renewables uh, yeah. because uh, there's also a climate change crisis so yeah. we cannot really depend on, on on fossil fuels we cannot depend on petrol and 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 we need um, in need we need on 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 on, on uh, we need wind farms we just need to be very care very careful where where we put them there are plenty of places where there is really no risk uh, so it's a question of of careful site selection okay. uh, there is also some solutions. In, in some places, you can actually have got um, uh, radars or, or other forms of, of, of bird detectors uh, that signal when these large birds of prey are passing through uh, mm -hmm. and then can shut down uh, on demand uh, the, the rotating blades uh, and allow the birds to pass through and then, and then they restart again. Um, and there's been a number of, of case studies where, in fact, uh, this system has worked quite well and, and has had minimal impact on the profitability and the productivity the, the the production of electricity uh, uh on the part of these uh, of these wind, wind wind farms no no raptors usually do not prey on vultures vultures are are, are very large birds and uh you know they 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 are left alone there's no raptors do not really try to kill vultures next slide please um you know, against collision, there are some really simple, uh, uh, again, solutions which have been used extensively in Europe. Yes. Um, uh, which, uh, which are, you know, these this, uh, anti-collision devices that you can put on, on, on the lines that uh -huh. increase the visibility of the line um, uh, to, to vultures and, 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 yeah. and, and other wildlife. Yeah. Next slide, please. Uh, com compared to the cost of putting a high voltage line, this is minute. It's absolutely yes, it is. It is yeah. indeed. It is. Oh. Then the clofenac, we've already talked about it. Uh, you know this this uh, this veterinary medicine that is given to cattle uh, that caused the crash uh, of, of vultures in 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 southern India, uh, that is now available also in Europe, and we have been we have been uh, banning or we've been uh, campaigning to ban it in in Europe. There are alternatives to to veterinary diclofenac with the same properties that. Um, uh, that are not toxic to, to, to vultures. Um, and we have been partly successful in uh, in restricting its use in, in, in Europe so that uh, uh, vultures do not get uh, poisoned with, with veterinary diclofenac as, as they did in, in, in Southern India, in Southern Asia. Right. Next slide, please. <laughs> and then another issue with vultures is of course food. I mean, without food, Without food, they don't, you know, you don't have vultures. And in, in some places, the availability of food was indeed a problem. Uh, and this was a problem in Europe, uh, particularly about 20 years ago, um, when the, uh, the medical disease appeared, uh, appeared in, in, in Europe. Uh, before, we had this, we had this very traditional, um, natural, extensive livestock breeding system where dead animals that died because of disease domestic animals were left for the vultures but then because of uh, that you know the, the mad cow disease um the, the most european uh, countries adopted a very strict veterinary regulation that that uh, m made it obligatory for any dead uh, domestic animal to be picked up and taken to an incineration facility uh, so so as not to spread um, uh, that that or other diseases to, uh, to 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 the other livestock so so for a number of years um this was this created a, a big problem in europe because basically the, the countryside had no carcasses left any longer right. at least of domestic animals because all of them are, were being picked up um, and taken to incineration this has got a very high cost for the taxpayer as you can imagine you know the number of trucks that you need to pick up all the then animals across a, you know very vast countries um, producing quite a lot of greenhouse gases consuming petrol and, and so on next slide please um, so i mean there are solutions to this and and this is what it's called you know sometimes vulture cafes or vulture yeah. or vulture restaurants so w one way we, we we went around this is uh, we, we created um, uh, and under special permits uh, these uh, these feeding stations for vultures um, and in spain there are um, there are hundreds of them uh, that that provide food food for the vultures um, uh, and uh, under special permits and therefore and therefore provide them the the food they need uh, which otherwise would would not exist in in, in the countryside next slide please 
yeah and and i think uh, uh, yeah uh, this uh, indeed uh, in europe again you, you you start to have quite a lot of of, of available of available food um in in these supplementary feeding stations of vulture restaurants but also but also outside uh, and vultures are, are now again thriving ne next slide please um, yeah, so uh, uh, we even went uh, one step beyond, and now in Europe, uh, uh, again, the, the veterinary authorities are actually allowing um, uh, the, the fallen dead livestock to be left uh, wherever wherever they, they die for, for, for feeding scavengers, including vultures, and, 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 and that makes indeed uh, food available again for vultures and explains partly the huge increase of vultures in, um, in, in, uh, in Europe. Next slide, and I will soon finish. Yeah, so this is just some, some, some figures from Spain, <clears throat> quite a lot, I mean, uh, thousands and thousands of, of livestock uh, uh, estates and farms um uh, which uh, actually now provide or, or leave their dead animals for vultures um this has been increasing and, and, wow. and therefore the, the food supply for vultures uh, has been has been increasing next that's slide please a, that's very interesting really yeah Okay. Yeah, so covering covering really large areas of Spain, uh, as as you can see there in the in the map. Next next slide. And 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 here you can see actually, um, you know, the, the, this is a map between Portugal and Spain. You've got Spain to the right, Portugal to the left. And you can really see the impact of food availability and veterinary uh, regulations on the distribution of vultures. There is no wall. There is no barrier. Vultures can fly freely between. Portugal and Spain. And the dots there, the red, the blue, and the green dots, are actually movements of vultures. And as you can see, vultures hardly move to Portugal. And the reason for that is that there's no wall, there is no barrier, they can they can fly. The habitat is more or less the same uh, uh, you know, in, in the two countries. The problem is that in Portugal, um, uh, uh, carcasses still need to be picked up uh, and, and, and taken to incineration. So there are very few carcasses left in the field. While in Spain, uh, uh, this practice is now allowed and, and farmers can leave their carcasses for the vultures and vultures have got a lot of food and as a result basically vultures stay where there is food and they don't move to places where there is no food which in this in this case is, is, is Portugal and this but, is but really that's, a, but that's interesting is there no legislation in the European Union that goes right across so there is really still country by country well well no there is the, the legislation that was brought in the European Union in the beginning to to actually take the all the carcasses to incineration was applied all over the place. But then uh, the European Union uh, has brought in new legislation, which has been translated in in, in Spain, but not yet in Portugal. And we, oh. we are working with the Portuguese authorities uh, to to basically uh, convince them that they can move one step further and and adopt uh, 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 this new European legislation, which has been already adopted in Spain, but not yet in Portugal. Uh, uh, and 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 therefore, um, uh, you know, get get um, uh, up to speed with what the Spanish are, are also doing. Next slide, please. Yeah, and this is um, this is really my um, my my my, uh, my second message. <laughs> the main threats to the, the main threat to vultures uh, are poisoning and electrocution. Uh, poisoning is a serious wildlife crime needs to be to be combat, uh, combated uh, and, and this needs to be done by the authorities um, electrocution uh, the operators uh, the operators need to um, uh, need to take this as uh, because this, this this is part of, of, of their operational liability uh, the, the electricity companies that operate these lines need to take this seriously and also the availability of food is very important and in, in places like Portugal uh, this regulatory change needs to happen so that uh, farmers can leave again their carcasses in in the field and i realize that we are already one hour uh, into the broadcast i would probably um, leave it for now and maybe answer any questions uh, that you might have oh wow. and yeah this is this is a final slide um just showing you the, the 23 species of vultures that there are in the world so this includes 
uh, new world and, and old world uh, old world vultures the, the the biggest of them all uh, is of course the Californian uh, condor which you've got there on the type on the bottom right hand corner uh, next to it you've got the the Andean relative the Andean uh, the Andean uh, condor the birded vulture which uh, which you, you saw in the picture poisoned is is the one there on the on the bottom left hand corner um, and these are the 23 species of uh, um, of vultures that that exist in the world four in Europe uh, many of them in Africa, uh, completely uh, going down the drain uh, in, in Africa and only in Europe, really, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, re getting getting back back to to uh, to healthy population status and and recovering the distribution range. So, how many of those have you seen in real life? Uh, quite a few, not all of them, but uh, I've never seen a Californian uh, condor. Uh, uh, I thought so. I was going to ask that. Unfortunately, yeah. but yeah, I've seen quite a few of the Asian, the African, the European species. I've seen Andean condor in the Andes. Uh, of course, I've seen turkey vulture and an and American black vulture, which are your two other vulture species, which are relatively common uh, across uh, across the the the, the US. Um, uh, but yeah, I've, I've seen quite a few. Thank you so much. Really interesting. Yeah, thank you so much. This has been, I can't believe how much I learned in this past hour about vultures and their threats and, and just like all the different projects that you are doing at your organization to help these animals. Um, so I think, you know, thank you for everything you do and for sharing your knowledge with us. And yeah, behalf on, on behalf of everyone in the audience too. Um, I shared the web, the link in the chat for the website actually christian could you maybe share that on the um share that comment just uh, wait, wait, wait what do you want me to share sorry the, just the, the comment where i had his i can put it in again just for the website um and if you go to that site then you can see the projects that are ongoing um oh there it is yes yeah, you and also, Christian, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to share the screen too and just show them how to yeah, get hang on, to you. Hang on, I'll, I'll let you back. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can also sign. Uh, you can also sign uh, up to to receive our our newsletter, which we produce uh, once a month um, in our, in our website. Uh, so um, do explore it and and uh, and uh, do sign for the for the the, the newsletter. Well, yeah. there, how, how big how big is this organization of yours i know you started i think in 2013 or so and how yeah. do you get your funding well we get funding usually from the european union uh through through projects which we need to apply for uh and then and then get 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 them funded and then implement okay. the conservation actions on the ground so it's usually from the european union but it's this is a constant struggle and it's indeed one of my main tasks is to co to constantly fundraise for our team is 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 composed of, of 15 people distributed in seven countries across europe okay. uh, and we work in, in you know in many vulture conservation projects um, but yeah, I, we, we always need to constantly fundraise for and 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 uh, apply for for new projects and implement them in order to to continue with with our work. Yeah, and, and I want to mention, you know, in addition to signing up for the emails, which is here at the if you scroll down on the main page, you can donate here. Yeah. And one thing that I noticed when I was looking around is that you can go to the ongoing projects, and um, and you can see different ongoing projects that you have here. And also you can go to um, you. A lot of these projects themselves are so established that they have their own websites. Oh, I didn't yeah. manage to actually get to it that time. Yeah. Um, but you can, if you explore around on here, you can donate specifically to a lot of these projects as well as the point. Um, yeah. That's incredible. So, so, I mean, after all that, you've shown a lot of difficulties. Are you still very positive as a person? Yes, of course we are because, in fact, in Europe we are winning the war. And as I've said, uh, you know, uh, yes, we can do it. We can we can restore populations. We need, we can increase populations. We've done it in Europe. Um, I, I'm just hoping that we can do the same in Africa and Asia, where where indeed uh, vultures are, and in South in South America, for example, where the Andean condor is 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 really uh, uh, decreasing significantly as well. Uh, I hope uh, I, I I believe that we can replicate the this vulture conservation success story that that we have in Europe in, in in other continents 
do you work together with other continents then? Or? We do. We, we increasingly work with, with our African colleagues and also with, with Asian <laughs> colleagues. And we also have got now some, some links even with, with, with American colleagues to share best practice and, and, uh, and try to replicate you know, what, what has worked well. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, um, I think that there's no other comments coming in in the chat. I think we did a good job of addressing comments as they came up um, for the most part um, throughout the conversation. So, yeah, thank you so much. And it's getting very great. late, so thank you so much. Yeah. It's nearly nearly 11.30, I think. In, in, right. So that's getting yeah. very late. So thank you so much. I, I know you're very busy, so we really appreciate your, your time, Jose. It's been fantastic. Thank you so no. much. Thank you for the attention and thank you for course thank you for the for, for the time and, and your interest on on on, on our on, on cultures okay well thank you so much and thank you everyone for all the for best attending all your patience in the beginning sorry for the technical hiccups yeah but that's the way it goes in live shows thank yeah, you so thank you Bye, okay everyone. thank you